And uh, Andrew, as Peter says, this should be Liberal heartland and if they need someone like Rashini Campbell in their ranks. Yeah, well, I, I think it will likely be the Liberals just falling over the line. I, got, I get that sense from both camps, Kieran, and uh, as put to me today, Labor's probably expecting 46 to 47. They think the weather today, they think a, a low pre-poll turnout means people aren't engaged. That costs them votes. They did a poll early in the campaign. We revealed the uh, on-afternoon agenda the other day, which showed Labor at 48. From the Coalition's perspective, they could see a scenario where they are behind tonight but end up winning the seat. That's what they say happened with Alan Tudge mm -hmm. in terms of the federal election result. That's what we saw in the New South Wales election on the week, uh, weekend. Last weekend it was, yes, it's been a big week, <laughs> um, where a, a number of seats, a, a Labor were in front in something like 14 marginals and ended up winning about seven or eight of them. So... That postal vote, later pre-poll count, tends to favour uh, the conservative side of politics. We know that. So I'll, unless there's a really big margin tonight, I won't be calling it. It is close, as Peter says. I think Peter Dutton really needs this. And I think a win is a win. I think if you, if you say that Eden Monero, when Anthony Albanese won it, was enough and it was a few hundred votes, then you say the same for Peter Dutton's leadership. Peter Dutton starts looking pretty unelectable if he loses tonight because... It'll prove he has a problem in Victoria. There's a belief he has one in New South Wales. So it's critical for him that he wins tonight. I believe he will.